Hey guys, welcome to week five with Cloth Cats Get Your Act Together with me, Jack Wynn. I'll be teaching you guitar as I've been doing for the past four, four weeks or so. So because we're approaching midterm, I just wanted to have this lesson to um, have like a bit of a brief roundup uh, covering all aspects of what we've done in the previous four weeks. Alongside that, I thought it'd be good if we could also do something new as we're doing um, every lesson. So with today's lesson, I thought we could uh, attempt to do a really cool song by the band, uh, the Beatles, uh, called Day Tripper. Um, it's really cool. It's got a really cool riff, and it's generally a, a good vibe. And we'll get into that. We'll get into that later on. Uh, but just before we get started, as we start with all uh, sessions, I've just got to say a brief uh, disclaimer. So if you're under 18, uh, tell your parents you're doing this session. Please feel free to ask questions and make comments. Uh, but stay safe online by stay safe online by just using your first name. And don't give out your contact details. And hope we'll have some fun today's lesson. Yeah, so uh, before we get started, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's been tuning in for the past four weeks. Um, I've enjoyed doing this a lot and it's been it's been a good learning exercise for me to be able to try and deliver these lessons in an online platform uh, without without the use of having that interaction back and forth between student and teacher. So it's been an interesting learning curve and it's something I've really enjoyed and I hope you all have too. So just before we begin, let's just get into a quick tuning session as we do always just to make sure we're all in tune with each other. Um, so I'm gonna start on my high E string this time. So I'm gonna just play each string twice. So I'm gonna go E, and then we got our B. So I'll just go through these as I'm doing them together, guys, just to make sure we're both in tune. And G. And D. go to the A, and last but not least, we'll go on our low E string. So if everyone just wants to play an E major chord, hopefully we'll all be in tune and ready to go. Yeah, so I just thought we'd get into another different uh, warm exercise today, just to, as a, like a um, a roundup of, of, of things we've been doing in previous weeks. So we're just going to start with a nice uh, little simple uh, C major scale like we did last week. And I'm going to put on a metronome again, uh, because as I was saying before, when you're doing your rock school grades, um, when you're doing your exams, it will always be to a metronome. So it's good practice to keep, keep, keep playing. So, so for those of you who want a reiteration of our C major scale in our open position, it's down here. We're going to start on our third fret on our A string, so on the note C, and we're going to go open on the D, and then we're going to go second fret on the D, third fret on the D, open on the G, second fret on the G, open on the B, and first fret on the B there yeah, to our top C. So all in all, I'll get the metronome going there, guys, and we'll just do this as a warm-up. So one, two, three, four, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and back. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, brilliant. And we've got another nice quick one, also starting on the note C, but we're going to go up to our A fret here. So if you just find your A fret, count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we should be there. And what we're going to do this is really interesting warm up because it makes your brain think because we're going up, up the notes, but we're going down the neck. So if I start on the note C here, I'm going to go C, C sharp, D, D sharp. But then I'm going to take my first finger when I go down to the A and I'm going to move it down a semitone here. I'm going to go and so on and so forth. What this does just gets your brain thinking, gets your all your fingers working, gets these nice clear notes that you're playing. This is a warm up that I still do to this day before I play shows. And then we're gonna go once we get to that top note, we're gonna go back down. 
So you can do, I'm doing down strokes on this one. You can do up strokes, down strokes, or you can do alternate picking. So alternate picking, I'm going down on one note, then proceeding to go up on the next. So it would be down, up, 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 and down, up, down, up. Finally ending on that bar C chord there. So if you can play that bar C chord in that E position that we said, that'd be brilliant yeah so i thought as well today so it's also good to get because we're going to be playing um a chord based song when we're uh, doing our song later on um i thought it'd be good just to get a nice little rhythm exercise but in in the form of a song so we're using the song wild thing that we've done in week three i believe so it's just starting on the chord g so if you get your g's ready we're gonna go g C twice on the C and then D twice and C twice. And if you want to sing along, sing along. Just get that smooth. And what we're doing here, we're just getting our hands, uh, getting the coordination between our right hand and our left hands all working in harmony together so we're going and G and C and D and C and G and C and D and C and G brilliant yeah so now we've uh should be nicely warmed up now like i said i didn't want to spend too much time on warming up because uh this song we're going to get into i feel it's going to take a bit of time so it's good to have spend the second half of this lesson just focusing on that so yeah i hope everyone's well and been enjoying this sunshine it's been a glorious day um but i hope everyone's ready to learn some cool stuff on guitar um so we're going to start with today we're going to start with learning a new scale uh also which this will be in rock school grade one so this is um similar to our e minor pentatonic but this is going to be called an a minor pentatonic scale traditionally used in all forms of music predominantly pop and rock and jazz and um and blues and it's one of the possibly the most popular scale in terms of uh, being a guitarist that you would find someone would go to if they were going to do a solo or find it in riffs and things like that so yeah our a minor scale so it's going to start on our low e string we're going to count up five frets and we're going to find our low a there so it should be on the fifth fret so if you got that together guys that's brilliant and we're going to go there First, but the first finger on a five, and then your pinky or your ring finger, whatever feels most comfortable, is going to stretch up to there to the um, to eighth fret. So we're going to go five, eight, and then it's going to go on this eight. It's going to go five, seven, and then on the D five, seven, and then on the G five, seven, and then on the B five, eight, and then on the uh, high five, eight. So all in all, that should sound a little something like this if you get these things. And the way I try and approach this scale is I try and approach it. The first one is the big stretch. And then all these up until you get to the high B and the high E, are there the big stretch. And all these are just what's called, we call it in guitarist language, it's called the box. And this it's called the box because it's like a box shape. And this can be a good thing and a bad thing. Some guitarists say uh, that it's not good to be caught in this little area of the fretboard because you know you've got loads more um, loads more gu uh, guitar to explore when you're playing your notes but it's still really good you can get some really cool sounds out of it so you can get some really cool licks and we could even possibly go into some of these licks if we get this scale nice done so just once again that's five eight five seven five seven five seven and remember on the b it's five eight and then the high e five eight and if you want to try that going down that'd be brilliant so i'll be going eight five eight five seven five seven five seven five so i'm just going to give you a minute just to get that 
in your head, and have a go over that, and then we'll try it with the metronome. Uh, we're at 80 BPM against it, just keeping it nice and steady uh, for people to get their heads around this. So I'm going to get that metronome going. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Like I was saying today, um, we're going to get into a song, but before we do that, there's a, a couple of um, a couple of cool little things I just wanted to go over because we've been learning bar chords in weeks one and weeks two. I thought it'd be really cool to show you some cool little things that uh, that, that that you can do with bar chords, which is called breaking a bar chord up and playing less notes. So a bar chord. As you know, you're fretting all six strings, so you're getting, but there's only three notes there, and you've got you've got three notes, a triad of a chord, and then you've got the octaves of that chord. So what we can do with that, so to say, if I take my A major there, I can break that up and play it in a more simplistic, uh, simplistic way, and you get a different sound with it. So if I was to take that chord there, and if I was to play the root note, so my first finger being on the fifth fret on the low E string, and then you take this ring finger here and you put it on the sixth fret on the G string and you just pluck them two, you get like a nice cool broken up sound. And I can play that across the neck. Like so. And if I want to make that minor playing in this broken up chord position that we do, all I do is I flatten this note here by a semitone, so making it from major to minor. So I'm going, instead of there, I'm playing it like that. And you can play it with your first two fingers, like so. You can play it with that, you can play it with your ring, uh, middle finger and then your ring finger, like so. So like that. So making that major to minor, major, minor. And these are really cool things. You'll see them used in lots of different songs. And I've got a couple of examples uh, of the the way these um, broken up bar chords are used to really good effect. So firstly, there's a song by Tracy Chapman called Fast Car, which is a brilliant example of using this technique of breaking up chords. So if I just play you a little example of this song, it starts on the chord C, but it's got a plucked feel. So you'll see it's like... So, so what I'm doing there, so I'm playing the note C, the chord C, but I'm just taking that bass note and the top C, I'm going hammering on, like we've done last week in the warm-ups, like so, and I'm just going to a broken up G, so I'm, instead of playing a full bar chord G, I'm just playing these two, so I'm plucking the bass note and the B, so B on the third fret, like that, so it's giving me that sound, and then when I go way up here to the seventh fret, for our E minor chord, so remember it's in the A minor position, like so. So if I was to go like that, it sounds nice and it sounds cool, but it's got a full sound. I wanted to break up that full sound by just lessening it. So I'm just going to play that bass note there, and I'm just going to play that top note there. So I'm breaking it up. So I'm putting my uh, second, my ring finger, my middle finger, sorry, on the A fret on the B, and then my first finger is not covering that E bass note, so it's like, and then I'm gonna go down to D, so this is D major, and instead of playing it in the, in the E position like that, we've got all the notes, I'm just, again, I'm just gonna break it up, and I'm gonna play the bass note, and the top note, like, so it's like so. So like so, so it's got a really cool different sound about it and um and these are these are like i said these are things that are used across all boards in popular music in terms of guitar there's another great example i've got which is a 
by a band called uh, Cage Elephant, and the song is uh, called Back Against the Wall. And it goes a little something like this. So again, so I'll be starting on our chord here in the E, in the e position of B, B flat. Uh, but instead of playing it like the full chord, I'm just going to break it up like so. Like, um, yeah. So it's starting on the G here. So instead of playing this G as a bar chord, again, I'm just doing that thing where I break it up. So I'm playing the bass note, G of the third fret, and I'm going to use my uh, ring finger to play the top note there. So in this case, it's on the fourth fret on the G string. So it's like, and then down to F. So this, that's the same, exact same shape, just jump down two frets. So it's like third fret to, four, um, to first fret, and then, so I'm going down, down, and then it jumps right up here to the A fret. So for this, it's, well, it's the same note as there, but it's the octave. So instead of playing it in the E position, our F major, I'm playing it in the A position up here. So it's going to sound like this. So I'm going to play first finger on the A fret or the A string, and then my pinky or your ring finger, whatever feels more comfortable, guys. I'm just going to put this down so you can see what I'm doing there. Um, so yeah, my ring finger is going to play that top note on the t on the tenth fret on the B string. So it's like this. So all in all, it'll go, da, da. and then here switching up to our C, like our C there, but I'm playing it here on the E position. So if you look, if I go come in closely there, that's the chord in full. But all I'm doing is I'm taking leaving that finger on, and leaving that finger on that bass note. So I'm just breaking it up like that. So full chord, broken up chord, like so. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that, so it's gonna sound like, and then up to our 10th fret, and then gonna go down to our sixth fret there, same shape, like the E position. Yeah, so it's gonna go G, F, F, C, B flat, G, So if I put that song on, guys, you'll see uh, what it sounds like. Um... So you'll see how it's used a kind of cool effect just to kind of break it up. Because if you're playing it with full chords, if I was just go like, like didn't sound as cool. Anyway, yeah, so that's uh, by a band called KJ Elephant. I just wanted to give you a few little pointers if um, if you've been playing these bar chords and you, you're sort of getting the hang of them, or if you just want to try something new, try something out, them fun, have some have some fun with that because, like I said, you can play around a bit and do all sorts. There's also, you know, I can think of Love Yourself by um, uh, Justin Bieber. That's another prime example of that broken up chord feel where it's just playing the, the root and the fifth. Okay, yeah, so without further ado, I thought we'd get into our song activity of today, which is a song by the band The Beatles. Of course, you will all know, or if you don't know, where have you been hiding? Uh, so yeah, so this song, Day Tripper, I'll give you a little example of how this song sounds so we know what we're going for. I'll put it in my Spotify handy. So it starts with this cool riff. We're, we're going to get into this riff as well. Really cool sound, a lot simpler than it seems. So don't be alarmed if you could thinking, ooh, I don't think I'm going to do this. Right? So this is a riff all based around a blues scale and it's going to start on our G. Louis, sorry. So we're gonna go. So I'll give you a little, a little, um, a little play of it. So it's gonna sound a little something like that. So if I get into this real slow, and we'll break it up. Hopefully by the end of it, you better play the um, the riff for this song, and then we'll get into the chords. And the chords are super duper easy. We should be able to cover them hopefully with relative ease because it's mainly open chords so we're going to start with this one it's got a few different techniques as well here it's got some 
we're including some hammer-ons and some pull-offs as well. So the way I like to play this riff, you might find your own style more comfortable. I'll do this one for now and we'll explore different ways of playing it as we go along. So we're going to start on our low E, like so. And it's going to go E, G, E, G, G sharp. So it's on the open and then three and then four. So I'm going to go. And then, but I want, what I really would like to be doing is I want to keep this first finger free because this first finger is going to be slotting down there for our next notes when we're going down to the A, a string. So if you want to play this with your uh, middle finger and maybe your index, maybe your ring finger as well, so it's going to sound like this. So if you notice the shape of my hand is covered for playing this next note here. So it's going to go A, G, G sharp, and then we're going to go on this A string on the second fret on the note B. So it's going to go... And then all I'm doing now is I've got these two fretted. So all I'm doing is there, I'm going to go E, G, G sharp, and then on that B. <coughs> and then I'm going to play this high E. So it's going to be on the same note, so that's on the D string. So what you want to do there is keep them both fretted. So it's going G, G sharp, and then B, and E. And then take your finger off and play that D open. So you've got... So, and then so the next bit so hopefully you better have up to here with me so we're going to go like that so let it ring open there and then and then go back on the B so the second fret and then we're going to take our ring finger and play it on the fourth fret on the D string and then back to the B and back to it so all in all we'll go through it again slow because it might take some time to get your heads around this but it's once you get it, you'll, you'll be playing it for hours because it's a super fun riff to play. So we're going to go. So D, open E, third fret, fourth fret, and then onto our A string, on the note B on the second fret, and then playing your fret, remember here, you're fretting both. So I'm going to go onto the D, and then play it open, and then, and then back on the B, and then the fourth fret with my ring finger there, and then back on the B, my first finger, and then open on the D. And then just finish off on that high E on the second fret, like so. So we'll play it at a nice slow tempo. I'll get this metronome because I have a tendency to rush when I'm playing this riff as well. In fact, we'll slow it down even more. So I'm going to go at a nice slow 70 BPM. Oh, again, by the way, guys, um, I know I mentioned this last week, but this. Um, app is called Sound Brenner and it's a free app. You can download it, you can change the uh, tempo and you do all sorts of fun stuff with it. But yeah, it's a cool thing to have on your phone for your guitar practicing purposes. Yeah, so this riff I'm gonna go two, three, four and It, I'll go for this again if you're struggling with it, but we're going open E and then but and then you want to be keeping this middle finger for playing this this note and, this, and then go up with your ring finger like so. Okay, and I'm plucking every time. So one, two, three. So three individual plucks of that string, and then a pluck of the B string of the B note on the A, second fret on the A, and then just playing that D, but it's also fretting on the second fret, and then let it ring open, and then I'm going to go back on that B, and then go up to this note F sharp, there, and then back to the B, and then open up on the D, and then finish on that high E, okay, so it's going to go, sorry. Look at him play himself. <laughs> So yeah, and so the next bit of this riff, it goes 
onto our low A string, and that becomes, it's the exact same riff and the exact same movements on the guitar, but you're just taking that low A, so instead of starting there, you're gonna start on this low A. Okay, so the exact same rules apply, so I'm gonna go open, three, four, with the same movements of the finger as well. So open, three, four, and then onto our G, onto our uh, D, sorry, and then D, and then the G, open, and then back to the D, and then on the fourth fret on the G, and then back to the D, second fret, and then open on the G, and then second fret on the G, so it's all the notes. So get your heads around that. Um, it's, a, it's a cool riff to do. I know it's a bit of a mind boggler. Just as you can see, it just uh, boggled my mind a little bit there. Then as well, too much time spent out in the sun, I think today. But the chords for this song, uh, super duper easy. So we'll get into the chords for this song. So we're just going to start on a nice easy E chord. So if you get your first finger, those you don't know, E chord, second fret, first fret on the G. Um, with your ring finger, put your second fret on the D and your second fret on the B on the A string. Sorry, so there. But it's not an E major chord here. It's what's called an E seven or an E dominant seven. So that might sound fancy, and I won't get into it today. So what? Boy, but what all all it means is we're going to take our ring finger off there and make that a dominant seven. Okay. So you got your normal E major chord there, and you take your ring finger off, make it a seventh. Remember when we've been doing our bar chords, and we want to make them a seven. All we do is take our dominant seven. All we do is take our little finger off, like so. Okay. Yeah. So first chord, E seven. So just normally, but take your ring finger off like so. And then chord two, we have an A seven. So exactly like an A, so we'll go to a normal A chord first. So we'll put our first finger on the second fret on the D. We'll put our se second finger on the second fret on the G, and then our ring finger on the second fret on the B, like so. And then what you need to do here to make this a seven, again, is we're just gonna take our middle finger off the make. So if you're just practicing here with the difference between those two chords, just have a go. And then you've got a slightly different tonality because you're adding a different note. Okay, so that's our second chord for this song. So it's E, seven, and then A seven. So I like, when I'm making this movement change with this chord, I like to visualize what I'm doing. I like to visualize the chord in my head before I make the move to it. Okay, so with this one, I like to get the E down, and I already know I'm just going to move this middle finger just down a string there, so it goes from that note there, the B to the E, okay, so it's like so, and then just move that one down, and then this finger is already kind of in place, to pl place there, on that second fret on the uh, B string, so that, so E7, so we're just going to try and do a bit of movement between these two chords just to get uncomfortable. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four on the E and then one, two, three, four on the A7. So one, two, three, four. And remember, take your middle finger, just move it down one there. And then your ring finger is sort of in place for the, set, for the second fret on the B. And one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, Okay, so just practice moving between those two chords. Hopefully you should be getting it okay. And so this is gonna sound a little something like this in context. It's gonna start with a riff. Twice through. And it's gonna go, got a good reason for taking the easy way out. And then to our A7. Got a good reason. Back to our A for taking the easy way out. And now we've got one more chord in here. It's a bar chord of F sharp. So we're going to get in our E position. 
And if you're struggling to do these barcodes, what we can do is we can take our E card there and we can just slide it up to threats like that. So it's one, two. So if you're struggling to do the barcode F, just have that F like that. And what I like to do is I like to just, I'm just playing the strings that I'm fretting. So I'm not playing them. I'm just playing these. If you can't do this proper bar chord like so. So all in all, it'll sound a little something like this. So this is where we're up so far on our E7. Got a good reason. And then we're just gonna have a couple more chords in here and then we're through. So what we're gonna do with this now is an A chord. So we're just back to our normal A light. It took me so long to find out. And then we're gonna go to a G sharp. So if you've got your bar chord, it's on the fourth fret. But a simpler way of doing this, I think, for the purpose of here, if we're going to stick with this things, if we're not getting these bar chords, we'll just keep in this E position, and we're going to go from um, she was a day tripper, so on the F sharp, one, so I'm just doing all down strokes, one way ticket, yeah, and I'm going to slide up to the fifth fret, it took me so long, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, to find, and then we're going to go to this chord, a C sharp, and if you're struggling with a C sharp, what we could do, if you got these, if you've been practicing your bar chords in the A position, like so, you can bit slide up to the fourth fret, and play like that, but if you're struggling with these, don't worry about that, and we're just going to keep it all in this E position, like so, and we're going to slide up to our tenth fret, so, sorry, ninth fret, okay, so it's going to go, um, it took me so long to find and slide up to the ninth to find out. So I'm just going to find out. So all in that same position, like so, to find out. And then last but not least, finish on the seventh fret on the note on the chord B. Then I found out, and it's just going to start back with that riff again. So I've got the lyrics here for the song. She's a big teaser. So in that E7, remember, just taking your pink, your ring finger off. She's a big teaser. She's a big teaser. And we're going to change to our A7. She's a big teaser. And back to our She took me half. She's a day tripper. So on our F sharp, remember that bar chord. If you want to play it like that, that's completely fine. It sounds really cool. It's she's a day tripper. One way ticket, yeah. And then slide up to our fifth. She took me so long to find out. So on that ninth fret for our C sharp, and I found out like so. Yeah, so what we're doing there, when I'm not fretting the bars to make it a full bar chord like that there, and I'm just playing the uh, the E position notes, it's what's called a Locrian chord, where you're taking that, and you've got these ringing that through. So it sounds really cool, you can have some fun with that. Like, so you have some fun up and down in it, because you're keeping the same shape, so if you want to just... Have an explore, and as long as you know your notes up here, so I know we've gone through it before, but it's good to go over it again. If you know your notes on this note, low E string, wherever you're placing your wherever you're placing your chords, so if you're playing it with these three fingers, and imagine that's the soft, if that's the note what would be on is that's the chord you are playing. So for this example, I'm on the ninth fret, that is our C sharp, so it's playing it in a Locrian, what's called a Locrian position, okay. And you can have, like I said, you can have some real fun with that because you can get some real different sounds. Because if I go down to the seventh fret, for example, like the B chord here, if I play it in a full B chord like that, it sounds really nice. But if I want to take that off and just play, we've got the intro to uh, Yellow by Coldplay, or 
if you were to um, do it in like, the F sharp position, like so, like this. <laughs> That's the start to the Smith song, How Soon Is Now. And the, all, all these fantastic guitar players uh, and, and musicians and artists who, who wrote these songs, the, all they've done is discover uh, the, 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 the joy and the beauty of, of the sound of a locker room chord. And why it's called that is because instead of fretting your top notes here, the B and the E, you having them ring open like this and just taking them, it's got a different tone. Still got the, all the notes on the F sharp. So, all the notes are still there. Um, but it's just instead of it sounding full, so I'm playing the three notes, the triad, the first, the third, and the fifth, and the octaves of that note. I'm just playing the madness of new notes with these top notes. Okay, like so. Yeah, and to make that minor again. If I want to have some fun and make that minor, all I'm going to do is take my middle finger here and I'm going to flatten it by a semitone. So if that's on the first fret on the G, on the G string, I'm going to take that. If I want to make that F sharp minor, I'd take that and swap my middle finger for my first finger and put it on the second fret like so. It's got a real nice sound. Sound there on the fifth fret, A major, locker room chord, make it into a minor chord, like so. You got some really nice fun stuff going with it. So you can have some you can have some fun with that guys. And as I said today, I wanted to do like a, a brief roundup of things we've been covering, but also sort of give you some kind of cool little things to go with and have some fun with because half of what learning guitar is it's um it's it's about self like exploration it's about finding a certain tool or something that, that that works for you and you can try and make it and making it your own just and and real and really just sort of sitting down and having some fun and exploring exploring your instrument and the, and the, and the possibilities of the sounds it can Come up with so as I said before, that these are the Locrian chords. So a major e, F sharp, this would be F sharp major in the E position. And instead, I'm just taking my finger up there, the capo fingers, we call it, and just playing it like so. Yeah, you can have some fun with that, it's a lot of fun. I know I, I still use it to this day. Yeah, so if, I'm going to use this part of the lesson now, as we do always at the last part. Um, if anyone's got any questions or any queries or any possible songs that we would like to cover or, or, or riffs that you want to debunk and, and, and figure out, I can post some videos during the week for people to get on board with. Or if people want a little bit more of an in-depth look over the Day Tripper riff, because I know it's, um, it's a tricky riff to get your head around. So yeah, if anyone's got any sort of questions or anything, um, I'm on board now and uh, let me know and let me know what songs you want to do because yeah, like I said, this isn't about me guys, it's about all you and your journeys and I'm just here to facilitate that for anything you need to do. Oh, on another topic though, if no one's got any questions, I've got um, I've got what's called a loop, a looper pedal now, which is real good fun. I can um, take a chord progression that I've got so I'm going to do a random chord progression. Uh, let's do... Right, we'll just loop it like so. So there's, there's a good thing, if you haven't got one. Really cool tools if you're just starting a journey, if you've got no to jam with. So I can take that and just start like soloing. station you can get pick up loads of real cheap ones um i'm gonna do some little clips in the week and start 
talking about uh, effects pedals as well, because I don't know how many people are playing electric guitar, acoustic guitar, or thinking about effects pedals, or even know what effects pedals are. But um, as you're going on your journey year by year with with um, with, te- with with learning your instrument, you'll find that these become uh, a big part of of how you play. If you, especially if you're going to be playing electric guitar, I know I use several pedals. So just give, to give you a little example of what a, what a guitar pedal is, I've got one here that I don't use currently. So it's just effectively a little box, and what all this does is change the sound of your instrument. So if, for instance, this is a chorus pedal. Um, we'll, I'll get into, like I said, I'll, get, I'll do some videos during the week and uh, we can sort of start to touch up in there because I've got a load of cool pedals that we can all have a look at. But if um, that's everything, so I'll leave it there. If anyone's got any um, questions or, any, or anything, remember to put it in the comments below, like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great rest of your week and have fun, whatever you're doing, wherever you are. Take care.